As any researcher worth their salt will tell you, subjectivity and bias are two sneaky culprits that you need to watch out for whenever you're undertaking research. Thankfully, triangulation is one weapon that you can use to fend off these little monsters. In this video, we'll unpack triangulation using plain language so that you can approach your project with confidence. Let's do it. Hey, my name's Emma, and today we'll explore triangulation, what it is, the different forms it can take, and how you can get the most from this powerful tool. Now, this video is based on a lesson from our popular short course, Qualitative Research Bootcamp. So if you're feeling a little overwhelmed by the sometimes intimidating world of qualitative research, be sure to check that out. So first things first, what exactly do we mean by triangulation in research? Well, despite the fancy name, triangulation simply means using multiple methods, data sources, or even researchers to enhance the credibility of a study's findings. The idea is that by approaching the research question from multiple angles, you as the researcher can gain a more holistic view of the situation and thereby reduce subjectivity and bias. In other words, triangulation helps ensure your results aren't skewed by a single method, source, or perspective. As I alluded, there are a few different types of triangulation at your disposal. Typically, triangulation methods fall into one of four categories. Data triangulation, methodological triangulation, investigator triangulation, and theoretical triangulation. So let's unpack each of these. First up is data triangulation. As the name suggests, this approach involves using different sources of data within one study. For example, if you were researching people's opinions about a political event, you might collect data at different times, from different places, or from different groups of people. Naturally, by using multiple data sources, you'd gather a more holistic perspective that spans both space and time. Now moving on to the next option, we've got methodological triangulation. As the name suggests, this approach involves using multiple methods to gather and analyze data. For instance, you could combine interview-based data, in other words, primary data, with document analysis, in other words, secondary data. Similarly, you could combine qualitative methods with quantitative methods, Whatever the combination, the core idea here is that each method has its strengths and weaknesses. So by using several methods, you can get a fuller, more balanced understanding of the topic. Next, let's look at triangulation option number three, which is investigator triangulation, also sometimes called researcher triangulation. With this approach, different researchers are involved in the data collection and interpretation process. By having multiple researchers' perspectives at play, this type of triangulation does a great job of reducing individual bias and can also help bring different perspectives to the analysis. In a nutshell, this type of triangulation echoes the old maxim that two heads are better than one. All right, last but not least, we have theoretical triangulation. Now, as the name suggests, this approach involves using multiple theories or theoretical frameworks to interpret the data. For example, if your study was exploring student motivation, you could assess the data through the lens of both self-determination theory, SDT, and expectancy value theory, EVT. The former focuses on the intrinsic and extrinsic motivations of students, while the latter hinges on expectations and value perceptions. If all of that sounds a little fluffy, don't stress. The key idea here is that by applying different theoretical perspectives to the same data set, you can achieve a more comprehensive understanding of the phenomena you're studying. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about theoretical frameworks, we've got a dedicated explainer video covering that. As always, you can find the link in the description. All right, to recap, the four types of triangulation we looked at are methodological triangulation, data triangulation, investigator triangulation, and 
theoretical triangulation. While each of these triangulation methods are useful on their own, it's even better to combine them. Now, of course, this is quite a time-consuming undertaking, but doing so can help you significantly reduce the level of subjectivity and bias within your analysis. So be sure to carefully consider your options when designing your study. If you enjoyed this video, remember to check out Qualitative Research Bootcamp, our flagship course for new qualitative researchers. If you're currently working on a dissertation or a thesis, you can also grab our tried and tested chapter templates completely free of charge. As always, you can find the links in the description. Just remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and be sure to check out this video next. I'll see you there.